Hello and welcome to another educational video about screen printing by Catspit Productions. Thanks a lot for clicking on my video today. I really appreciate your time and attention very much. And if you like my videos, make sure to support Catspit Productions by subscribing to my YouTube channel, liking the video, maybe leaving a comment, and also you can send a super thanks. All right, so if you like my content, please support me here on YouTube so I can continue to make videos for you indefinitely. All right, so today I am going to address something that I have spoken about in the past before, right? Uh, emulsion over mesh, okay? It's something that's kind of going around on the internet right now once again with textile screen printing. And, and this is what we want to explain. So I'm going to give you my rundown on emulsion over mesh. What is emulsion over mesh or EOM? What does that really mean? Okay, so this is a really technical thing with screen printing, very technical. Okay, and what it's referring to actually is the amount of emulsion that is built up over the mesh. Okay, so there's some technical things. Again, it's very complicated, as you know, with a screen printing screen, this side, the flat side that comes in contact with the substrate is known as the substrate side, right? The side that you put your ink and squeegee on is known as the inkwell side. But guess what? And I've told you this before. There's another inkwell on this screen and it's on the substrate side. Technically speaking, Emulsion over mesh is the buildup of emulsion that rises above the mesh. So this is really all about the substrate side, not the inkwell side. But what happens here is in the stencil area where you can feel the stencil with your hand, right, on lower mesh counts, we'll talk about that, there is a raised emulsion over this mesh. And what it does is it creates a little bit of depth right? It creates a surface where basically the first thing to come in contact with your substrate is the emulsion, not the screen. If we're talking about high detail work. Textiles is a little different. Okay, so what you have to understand is emulsion over mesh is how much emulsion is built up above the mesh plane. And in this little area, when you have fine lines and very, very uh, detailed areas, it creates a little bit of depth and it's also known as an inkwell, believe it or not, because ultimately with emulsion over mesh, when you're talking about graphic industrial printing, very high detail, technical, critical printing, this emulsion touches the substrate first and allows for a little bit of space for the ink to be laid or printed. You follow? Okay, so what we're talking about here is very technical. Again, I will reiterate that throughout this video. This is very technical. And with textile screen printing, it's not as critical. And this is what I'm trying to explain. Okay, so emulsion over mesh is measured in microns. Microns are a very small increment of measure, if that's correct to say that. And we use a little device over here that I have, which I'll show you here. This is a device that is used to measure the emulsion over mesh. So what this does is it measures the thickness of the mesh and then it will measure how much emulsion you have built up on the mesh. Okay, so we have that device. I don't know what it's called technically, but it measures emulsion over mesh. And I believe I have a video that I did of all, a lot of these uh, quality control uh, devices and what they do. So you can watch, I'll put the link in the video below for, for the overview of the quality control devices but we can measure emulsion over mesh in microns. And, and it's a very, yeah, very small thing. Okay, so with that being said, you know from my teachings that I teach, we wanna, we wanna coat the screen. When we coat this screen, we wanna coat it substrate side first, flip it over, inkwell side, yeah? Right, okay, and then I was gonna say, and then what we do, so it sounded like, blah, blah. okay, and then <laughs> what we do is we put the screen in a drying rack 
normally with the substrate side down, right? Now, <laughs> what that does is it allows gravity to pull the emulsion to the substrate side. So what you have ultimately is on the inkwell side, if you, on a 110 mesh count, and this is something we gotta talk about, on a 110 mesh count on the inkwell side, after it's dried and you've exposed the stencil, you can feel it and it's like flat. You don't feel anything. But when you flip it to the substrate side and you, you put your hand over the stencil, you can feel it. You can feel the emulsion. You can see that there's obviously the emulsion is built up on that. And it's important to note, like I said, that that will mostly occur in textiles on lower mesh counts. Why? Because lower mesh counts naturally hold more emulsion than higher mesh counts. On higher mesh counts, you will not feel that because the stencil, the emulsion is very thin because on a 230 or a 305 mesh, it's holding way less emulsion than a 110. Okay, so on your lower mesh counts, you're going to feel that. We're gonna coat substrate side, inkwell side, let it dry in the screen rack with the substrate side down, pulls all the emulsion to the substrate side, the inkwell side should feel smooth. The substrate side should have some depth on lower mesh counts. Okay, so that's a good protocol for textile. But the thing is, with textiles, you know, the emulsion over mesh is not really going to help you much at all. And there's a lot of reasons for that. So let's talk about it a little bit more. Here is the technical thing about emulsion over mesh. <laughs> this is coming out from my experience and my education. So emulsion over mesh is critical when you're doing high detail. If you're printing graphic industrial stuff, circuit boards, membrane switches, glass, metal, plastics, substrates that don't have a texture like t-shirts. T-shirts are, are what's called textile, it's fabric. So it has crevasses. Okay, and artwork for t-shirts can vary hugely from graphic industrial artwork. So when you're talking about emulsion over mesh, you're really talking about very fine lines, very small artwork. When the emulsion is close to itself, meaning you have a fine line or dots or some kind of high detail, right? The emulsion over mesh works as we predict. With t-shirts, say we want to do a big smiley face and it's yellow, big circle, and we, we knock out the, the little eyes or whatever. We, we do yellow, high opacity yellow ink on a black shirt, right? And we, we do a big patch of yellow ink, okay? On wide open areas, emulsion over mesh is going to do nothing for you, nothing. Scientifically, nothing, okay? Because it's only critical near the edges. So if you have a big, wide open space, which a lot of us do with, with, with textiles, now this has little lines and stuff like that and blah, blah, but a lot of the spot colors that we print for t-shirts is wide open mesh, it's spot colors, that's what we call it, right? Okay, so, so in those situations where the emulsion the stencil is very big. It's, it has a big space between edge to edge on the emulsion. The emulsion over mesh is not going to do anything for you. And another reason why it's not going to do anything for you is because you're printing on a t-shirt. It's a very porous um, substrate that absorbs inks. Uh, there are crevasses, right? As Bear Grylls would say, it's a textured surface. Right, so if you do, you could do 85 line per inch halftone and you print it on a t-shirt, well, guess what? A lot of those dots are falling into the knit and they're not even printing. Okay, so emulsion over mesh is more about high detail in graphic industrial situations. With textiles, it's a good protocol to follow, but, but it's not going to really help you in the long run and I'll explain more about that. All right, so we have uh, a little device that can measure the amount of emulsion 
over mesh in microns. Okay, so this little device, it has a metal backing plate, if you can see that, right? And so we take that and we put it on the back side of the screen. And first we're gonna measure an open stencil area. Okay, so in the middle of the skull where it's open, open mesh, right? If you can, guys can hopefully hear, let me move in a little bit closer. All right, and you can see I got the metal backing plate over here. So I put the probe on top, try to let it chill out. 96, 95 microns on the open mesh, okay? So now we take the little backing thing and we move it over to an area where you have emulsion and we do the same thing. And here we're getting 105, 106 microns, 104 right now. Okay, so you subtract the previous number from this number and that's what you get your emulsion over mesh in microns, right? You follow? So you see what I'm saying? So we can even measure this little eye area in, in the skull. What's the emulsion over mesh on this area? Well, it's about the same, 106. 105, 106, 104, it's around the same. And that means that even though this is a student screen and we coded it in a class, it's actually coded pretty evenly. It's not too bad. And this was done manually, right? So everybody, oh yeah, get, a, get an automatic uh, uh, coder and stuff. But here you go. We can measure this stuff with this here. 97 microns in the open mesh area. And we can move around. 108, 109 microns over here. 111, 112. And that's, of course, you know, I'm moving this around. I'm trying to do this for the video. So uh, if you were a mad, uh, a mad scientist in your lab and you had this a little bit more consistent, you understand, we can go here, see it's 104, 105, and that's measuring the thickness of the emulsion with the mesh and everything. So, does that make sense? You follow what I'm saying? So, the emulsion over mesh that you're getting, it's measured in microns and it's a very small amount, uh, unless you're talking about high density printing, which is a whole nother thing. High de We're not talking about high density printing here. We're talking about regular t-shirt printing, really, in comparison to graphic industrial printing. All right, so what this really means is that, like I'm sure you've seen a lot of videos on YouTube about building up your emulsion. So someone will coat a screen and let it dry, and then they come back and they apply more emulsion to the substrate side, and they might let it dry again and apply more emulsion to the substrate side. They might let it dry again and build more, you know, build up that emulsion over mesh for t-shirts thinking that it's going to give you more volume of ink, naturally, just magically by itself, all right? But the truth is, is that that little bit, which is measured in microns, that little bit is so small that what you do on press can cancel it out instantly. If you're not using the proper mesh count, if you're not using the proper durometer squeegee, if you do not have a little bit of off contact when we're talking about printing high volumes of ink on dark garments, you want off contact. If you're printing black ink on a white shirt, you don't need off contact. Black ink is the god of all inks, okay? But when you're printing white ink on a black shirt, you need off contact and you need a soft squeegee like a 60 durometer. You need a more open mesh count usually. Now, of course, if there's detail in that that we're trying to print, we have to go on a higher mesh count. But usually we try to pick the lowest mesh count possible to render the design on when we're printing white ink on a black shirt, right? Okay, so, so the little bit, the little bit of inkwell or depth that you can build up on the substrate side for t-shirts is not really critical. It's, it, I don't know, you know, this is something that, that you can read in the Saudi handbook, okay? Saudi is a manufacturer of chemicals. I sell their stuff. They make awesome emulsions and chemicals, the best on the market as far as I'm concerned. And they also have a handbook that they give out free. And in that handbook is a lot of technical information, really technical. And if you wanna go through and read that book, I, I defy you to, to contradict what I'm saying here today, okay? I'm telling you, the Saudi handbook will confirm what I'm saying. In other words, 
For graphic industrial printing, emulsion over mesh can be critical. When we're printing conductive inks, membrane switches, stuff like that, okay? Um, when you wanna print a certain volume of ink on a non-porous, non-absorbing type substrate like glass, metal, plastic, paper, other things, then you want emulsion over mesh. Okay, so I think I covered most of what I wanted to cover. Uh, let's try to reiterate here a little bit, okay? So emulsion over mesh is, is really most critical in graphic industrial printing where you have non-porous, uh, non-absorbing type substrates where you really need that depth, that inkwell, right? Like I was saying, okay? So like I said, you know that the inkwell side is where you put your ink and your squeegee and the substrate side is the side that comes in contact with the thing you're printing, which is known as the substrate, right? Okay, so with flat, non-porous surfaces that are non-absorbent and stuff like that, that little bit of emulsion allows for an inkwell to where the emulsion contacts the substrate first and the mesh isn't really touching the substrate and there's a little bit of depth in there, if you follow what I'm saying, right? So very critical for graphic industrial printing. But for t-shirts, it's a little bit different. You can build that up as much as you want. And I'm not talking about high density printing. There are methods where you use a very, very hugely stick, uh, uh, thick stencil, <laughs> stick, a stick pencil. A thick stencil is very thick and it prints a, a, a special ink and that's known as high density. Okay, that's different, all right? But when you're just printing like water-based or plastisol ink on a t-shirt, that little bit of emulsion over mesh or that, that stencil buildup that you think you've got that's gonna help you print more ink is really not going to help you print more ink really at all, uh, especially if you don't use the proper mesh count, proper durometer squeegee, off contact, your flood and stroke has to be proper, Okay, so what you want to take away from this video is that emulsion over mesh is very critical for fine lines and very high detail on non-porous, non-absorbent type substrates. So in that scientific way, emulsion over mesh can be critical. But with t-shirts, it's a little bit different story. So, so all I'm saying is that your, your setup on your press is going to be more critical than building up that, that emulsion, okay? And like I said, I coat my screens uh, substrate side first, inkwell side, and then they go in with the substrate side down, right? So I'm pulling all my emulsion down to the bottom side. Yeah, I do that as a matter of protocol. But on the higher mesh counts, you'll never feel it, okay? Not for t-shirts. And and it's just a matter of good protocol. I don't do it because it's giving me, it's giving me a better stencil with, with better detail and stuff like that, perhaps, but it's not giving me necessarily more ink without me setting up on the press properly. All right, I hope this makes sense. I think the best way to kind of really think about it is again, if we did a big circle, if you did a big giant circle on the screen and you had to print a big spot color circle, yellow, red, whatever. If you think about it scientifically, the emulsion over mesh, if, if, the, if the stencil is like this wide, it's 11 inches, a uh, circle 11 inches in diameter, right? How is the emulsion over mesh at these edges going to help you print more ink in the middle of the screen, right? So, and we also know that with screens, in the middle of the screen, the tension is less, and near the edges of the frame, the tension is higher. Okay, so emulsion over mesh, in that situation, like I said, that's a good way of thinking about it, is a big open, a big open circle. Say I have a 20 by 24 screen, I put a big freaking circle, right? Okay, so the emulsion stencil is around here. The edges are far away from each other, right? So that, is not going to help you print more ink at all, necessarily. It's all gonna be about your setup on press, your off contact, your squeegee, your flood and stroke, and, and how you print it. 
okay? It's only when those things are very fine details, very fine lines, that that really starts to become uh, a scientific factor in laying down a certain amount of ink, which is more for graphic industrial. Okay, so I hope this made sense today, guys. I don't mean to confuse the situation, but I always hear a lot of people talking about how they build up the emulsion, you know, and they're building up this, this depth, and that is like critical to laying down high volume of ink. But, but when you look at it scientifically, uh, if you consult the Saudi handbook and you read it and look at it, you'll find that it's not, that's not really the case for textiles. That's more of a graphic industrial thing. Okay, so if you have more questions about emulsion over mesh, uh, you can contact me. You can leave a question, you know, in the comments below. I try to get to all the comments on my videos and stuff. It's hard to do, but I do. And uh, <laughs> so feel free to contact me if you have more questions about this technical uh, topic. All right. And uh, that's it for today. I think I, I, think I uh, covered it as much as I can. I probably was redundant in some ways because that's what teaching is. Repetition is an awesome teaching tool and it helps people really get the point. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching today. Thanks for clicking and make sure to rate thumbs up, subscribe to my YouTube channel, give me a super thanks and we will see you next time.